Thanks, Chris. Uh, thanks, Jeff, for mostly stealing most of my thunder. Uh, because a lot of the insights I think that, that Jeff mentioned are, are exactly bang on, and I'm probably going to just reinforce those messages. Uh, but then at the end, I am going to provide a, uh, a lens which is, which is different from both Chu Kong and from iDream Sky, which is what is the lens when you are approaching a large ad network, uh, and what does all of this chaos kind of mean when, when you're working with ad networks? So, uh, so briefly going to touch upon the overall market. Uh, again, Jeff covered a bunch of these, these insights, touching upon acquisition, retention, and monetization insights, which, uh, which are largely kind of uh, somewhat counterintuitive insights about going into China, and then a summary in terms of the ad network strategy. Not going to cover this slide because it's just the scale of the market, but uh, this is the same point that Jeff mentioned. I think you cannot ignore tier two, tier three, tier four cities in China. Uh, that is where a lot of the people with the appetite for spending the time and the, and the money and the energy on, on the top games lies. And uh, you have to kind of, kind of very consciously build a strategy that accounts for getting your game into all of these, these cities as well. Um, RPG and card battle games, like huge in China. So uh, this is a comparison of the, the prevalence of RPG and, and card card battle games uh, between the US and, and China. And clearly, I think if you have a good solid RPG game or a card battle game, uh, I think you should, you should think about China. Uh, the market extremely fragmented on all three dimensions, distribution, payments, and discovery. I think this is a comparison of the, the level of stratification you have, not only on the app stores, but also across payments and discovery channels in the West and the level of fragmentation that you have on all three dimensions in China. I mean, essentially for every service that you have in the US that is kind of de facto, there will be five or seven de facto services which are all pretty big and pretty large. And it's a, it's a choice you need to make uh, on how you kind of get access to as many of these as possible. On the acquisition side, uh, I think like Jeff mentioned, I think size matters uh, because of bandwidth issues. Uh, make sure your game is is of the right size, otherwise a lot of people are just going to drop off uh, because they're not going to be able to download uh, games that are, that are huge from a bandwidth perspective. Uh, app Store promotions, extremely, extremely important. I think uh, I cannot emphasize enough how important it is that if you want your game to be successful, uh, the likes of 360, Vanduja, 91, etc., extremely important to be on your overall strategy. And, uh, and even there, just getting on those app stores is not enough. So if you've done all the hard work, if you've kind of done all the billing SDKs, integration, everything else, and then you just end up being there, but not being featured or promoted, it doesn't really work that way. Uh, game centers within social apps, uh, like that of WeChat, uh, I think given what we've seen on what happened in, uh, in the game centers of Line and Kakao, it's absolutely no uh, sort of no questions that this is going to be the next big thing besides the app stores, and it already is is pretty big. Um, again, like Jeff mentioned, so piracy, regardless of whether you you want to go into China or not, if you're on Android, you are already in China, so you might as well take it by the horns and and address this. And exactly like Jeff mentioned, I think once you choose to go in into China in a sort of proper official manner, then all the, I mean, it actually counters your pirated sort of content significantly. Um, on the retention side, I think clearly localization is really important. One of the, the sort of minor points about localization is just the, the number of different types of themes you want to think about um, that, are, that are more Chinese is, is extremely important. You want to sort of not just have a few standard themes, like more customization, like people love uh, customizing uh, in a, I mean, this, this is a, uh, kind of a, a trend not only in China but across Asia where having themes that you can customize for yourself instead of having uh, a, a few standard instances of the game is, is again, huge. Um, another example of kind of how different themes that are more locally specific, uh, sort of tailored are extremely useful. Uh, perspectives and color schemes. So generally, lighter color schemes, more sort of uh, 2D-ish uh, perspectives are, are a, a little more popular. So Guns Dash, 
uh, more popular than Temple Run. Uh, I think some of the elements are, are the fact that it is it is 2D. It is kind of a, a far more simpler control set game, and uh, and those generally tend to have worked better, especially on the on the more endless runner side. Uh, again, cartoons more than human characters. Um, so understand the the sort of the kind of characters and cartoons that people like. Uh, gameplay complexity, I think in general, people, even if the overall sort of uh, puzzle is, is of the same complexity, but the, the look and feel and the elements need to come across somewhat more simply, in, uh, especially in puzzle games, uh, than kind of the complexity that is generally acceptable in the West. People don't care about personal milestones as much as they do in the West. So like all of these, like you're on this point in the map is not very meaningful. Leaderboards and uh, sort of comparing yourself and where you are against your friends is, is far more powerful. And that's what you should, you should go after. Stars, objectives, progression maps, like people don't care as much in China as, as they do about leaderboards. Uh, simpler game controls, so while Temple Run has kind of four or five different controls all the way from tilts and shifts, like Guns Dash is very simple, just your basic slide and jump. Uh, give people sort of more daily gratifications, so I think daily bonuses, daily sort of login rewards, etc. work work reasonably well, and uh, and the more you can do kind of these these daily bonuses, they work really well. On the monetization side, um, I think while in the West kind of you have a lot of attempts, people in, in China try to reduce the number of attempts that you have in total and then uh, incentivize you to, to buy more and people do end up paying much more than they do in the West for those kind of upgrades. Uh, your app store, uh, your, your kind of store, in-store purchase has to be far more sort of simpler and single page. Um, and and in general, the look and feel, right? I'm just kind of pointing it out. The look and feel of the store, the look and feel of your experience in the store is very different from, uh, from how it looks like. So again, a little bit more cartoonish, a little bit more kind of lighter colors, more sort of block templates of, of how you, you buy stuff. Um, yeah, I mean, I mean, again, just very basic things about tabs and currency. So while I'm highlighting these, I think this is really more indicative than, uh, than stereotyping the entire genre. But I think you need to be very deep and detailed in, the, in those differentiations. So uh, I think localization is far more than, than even the characters and the sort of uh, language. It's more about how people perceive, like Jeff mentioned, uh, in many cases on Chinese websites, there's far more denser content in place. The same kind of analogy holds true even in games where there are certain cultural aspects of how they like things laid out. And it probably stems from the sort of deep culture of calligraphy and, and just in general how they parse and read things. And you need to be very careful in how you sort of present and make sure that they're parsing your, your content and your objects very cleanly. Um, Clearly, IAP and the sort of ticket size is extremely important. So I think while Jeff mentioned the aspect of uh, of the one RMB and not the impulse buy, I think even the currency sort of you want to sort of reduce the the actual price that they're paying per unit that they're buying. So I think that that kind of is a, is a broad sense on on various things that tend to work and uh, touching upon various aspects of monetization, uh, retention, and, and acquisition. But I think from, a, from an ad network perspective, um, I think it's extremely interesting to watch because clearly not any of this is, is what a traditional ad network does. Right? So if you are planning on doing an acquisition strategy that, that cuts across um, various publishers and, and general ad networks and getting access to all kinds of other users, and you have kind of these other strategies around app stores, how, how should it all fit together? Like are there two completely different parallel strategies? And I mean, in my view, the, the fundamental thing that joins uh, them is that a, any, like it's not even meaningful to go to an ad network if they're not getting you like really, really large scale. So if, it's, if you are a pretty um, sort of decent game in the West and you're looking for tens of millions of downloads, like that's when it makes sense to even think about sort of augmenting in addition to the standard app store strategy. So, 
if, a, if an ad network is not giving you much more scale than what you can ordinarily get from the app stores, then it's not even worth sort of talking to them. And, and my sense is that app stores that uh, or ad networks, which will blur the lines between publishers and distribution channels, um, will be the ones that will ultimately be successful. Right. So y you need to make sure that ultimately the value that the ad networks will bring is a very deep level of user segmentation and that user segmentation must apply not only on users that you're getting from sort of classical uh, ad placements uh, that ad networks do but also user segmentation um, that you get from these app stores like if imagine an app store that gets you to access to 200 million users and shows the same promoted uh, sort of app across all of those 200 million users. Like that certainly seems that there is an opportunity there for ad networks to come in there with deeper segmentation of those users, understanding which kinds of users like which kinds of games. Um, and, and that's where the true value of ad networks will, will evolve um, uh, this year and hopefully next year, where I think across users from app stores, across users in the distribution network of the ad networks, uh, like segmentation that makes sense and segmentation that ultimately helps the game become uh, sort of more targeted and more deeply entrenched in a, in a higher LTV audience is what's going to make it more successful. Thanks.